everybody. Welcome back to the Shaquille YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and today I am going to tell you the truth about synthetic fibers. There are two different types of synthetic fibers that we're going to dive into and I'm going to tell you all about them. But before I do, I'm going to remind you to like this post and subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can learn even more about alternative hair. Okay, let's dive right in. So, at heart, I am a synthetic wig girly. I typically wear synthetics more than I wear human hair. And the reason I wear synthetic hair is because it's just so easy. You just throw it on and you go. And I think a lot of you can relate to that. When I had hair once upon a time, I was never one to do my hair very often. I always just threw it up into a high ponytail and then off I went. I didn't usually spend the time, you know, curling it, straightening. I didn't, I didn't do a lot with my hair. My favorite was a ponytail. So knowing myself, I just sort of fell in love with synthetics because they're just, like I said, they're just so easy. Now, if you're someone who's wanting to start wearing wigs or toppers, or you've begun and you're just kind of experimenting and figuring it all out, then I wanna tell you about the two different synthetic fibers that you could potentially have. So there are your typical plain synthetic fibers, but there's also your heat friendly fibers or your heat defiant fibers. Now with these two fibers, there are a lot of similarities, but there's also a lot of differences. So we're going to cover kind of the basics on those things. Okay, let's talk about the similarities. So any synthetic fiber, whether it's plain synthetic or heat friendly synthetic is going to have what's called style memory. This means that even if you wash your wig, get caught in the rain, get it wet for whatever reason, once it dries, it's going to bounce right back to the exact same style that you had it in before it got wet. And even when it is wet, if it's not like completely drenched, the style is still going to stay intact pretty well. So I often get a lot of questions being like, well, once I wash this, is the style going to go away? No, it's not. No matter what synthetic fiber you have, you can wash it, get it wet however you want to, and the style is still going to stay and bounce back to what it was once it's dry. Now, that being said, if you do get it wet or you're you know, washing it or whatever you're doing with it that involves water, I do suggest making sure you're not using hot water or warm water, that you're using room temperature or above, but I typically err on the side of cool water as opposed to even room temperature. So the reason you're gonna wanna use cool water as opposed to hot or warm water is because heat does affect the style of your wig. So this brings me to my next point on both of these fibers. The only way that you are going to be able to change the style of your wig is by using heat on both of them. However, this is where it differs. If you have a plain synthetic wig, not a heat friendly wig, just a plain synthetic wig, I do not recommend using dry heat, such as heat from a hair straightener, heat from a curling iron, um, those kinds of things that you would use typically on your human hair. Don't use them on your regular synthetic pieces because it will melt your fiber or warp it and make it into something that you do not enjoy. Here, you know what? I am going to show you what happens when you put dry heat on a typical synthetic wig. I am using an old, old wig of mine. This is from like 1925. It's not. <laughs> this is just a really, really old wig that's just sitting around. I think it's Haley by Noriko. It's a basic cap. I got this wig in my first year of wig wearing when I didn't know anything about wigs and didn't realize that um, you could get something that's more natural than this. Anyways, this has literally been sitting in my closet for over 10 years, but we're gonna take normal heat. I have this set to 320, can you even see that? 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a temperature that you can typically use on human hair, and it's a temperature you can use on heat-friendly synthetics actually. But if you were to take this heat on a normal synthetic piece, let me pull out a piece that's inconspicuous. <laughs> okay, so here's your normal synthetic hair. I'm gonna put some heat on this. Ooh, I'm scared. Ugh. Okay, see what happens to it? I had it on for like less than a second and it has now warped the fiber and sort of singed it. Now it's becoming all like, frizzly and frosly, and this is not something that is easily fixable. It's pretty much ruined your fiber. 
So don't use heat, at least high heat like this on your synthetic fibers. You could use a really, 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 really low heat setting, like a dry heat setting um, on your plain synthetics. And it might be okay, especially if you spritzed it with some water first. However, if you are new to wigs and new to synthetics, I just would stay away from the, from the dry heat. I would stay away from it. But what you could do is something that's safe for all, sorry, I'm trying to put this down on my ledge here. Okay. <laughs> what you could do that is safe for all synthetics is use a steamer. So something that plain synthetic fibers can take is wet heat. You can use a steamer, like a fabric steamer that you would use on clothing to de-wrinkle it. You can use a fabric steamer on your plain synthetic wigs. You could also use it on your heat friendly wigs, but this is what I would typically use on my plain synthetic wigs. Now, the reason you would use a steamer would be to maybe restyle your wig, uh, maybe retrain your wig to come out and away from your face, maybe retrain a part on your wig, or something that it is widely used for would be to uh, defrizz the ends of your fibers. Now, I've just made a video actually on using a steamer with your synthetic wigs. Um, that I will link below so you can learn even more about how to steam your synthetic pieces. Okay, I'm going to take this off now and I'm going to put back on, this is my Dalgona 16 hand tied wig, which is one of my favorites. This one is a heat friendly fiber. So now I'm going to show you what happens when you use that same heat. So I, it's still at 320 Fahrenheit. Oh gosh, you can't even it's there, 320. <laughs> it's at 320 degrees Fahrenheit. You can use now this same heat on a heat-friendly synthetic wig. So here's the fiber now. And when I do this, it's not going to melt the fiber. It's just going to straighten it out. See, it actually helps the fiber. It helps repair the fiber. So a reason you would want to use heat on your heat friendly synthetic wigs would be to repair your fibers or to restyle your fibers. I've also done videos on how to recurl and how to straighten your heat friendly synthetic wigs. So I can also link those below so you can go and check those out. So a big difference between your plain synthetic and your heat friendly synthetic fibers are that even though in order to change them, they both need heat, it's the type of heat and you have to be very careful about the type of heat you use so that you don't ruin your wig. Now, if you do have a heat friendly wig, don't go above 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. Once you get too high, then that's gonna melt your fiber. I typically stay around 300 degrees Fahrenheit um, and I don't go much higher, but I wanted to show you even what 320 would do. It's not gonna hurt your fiber. What I also like to do whenever I use heat is spritz with water usually, and that typically helps to make it work a little bit better. Okay, so let me get back to talking about more differences or similarities between these two fibers. Another similarity that you will find between synthetic and heat-friendly synthetic is that they both tangle. If you are used to human hair or you're used to just your own bio hair, yes, of course it tangles, but there's <laughs> nothing like going from that to synthetics and seeing how it tangles and being like, what's wrong with my wig? Nothing's wrong with it. It's just synthetic fibers and the nature of it. Now, of course, some styles are going to tangle more than others and some are gonna tangle less than others but the nature of synthetics is that they tangle. Now, a good rule of thumb is the longer they are, the more tangly they're gonna get. The shorter they are, the less tangly they're gonna get. Typically, if you have them about mid neck length or chin length and above, they're really not gonna tangle and they're gonna be so easy to maintain. But the longer you go, the more friction and rubbing it's gonna be doing on your clothing, the more swaying around it's gonna be doing and the more tangly it's gonna become. So. Both fibers do tangle. Another thing you'll need to keep in mind is both fibers do get frizzy at the ends. So again, over time with the friction and the rubbing on your clothing and the swaying around, and also especially with combing and brushing, that's gonna make the ends of your fibers get really frizzy. And honestly, here's the truth, it happens fast. You might not think it will happen fast, but it happens fast, like within a few wears, it's gonna start to get a little bit 
fuzzy at the ends. And I always have people being like, oh, this is such poor quality fiber, it's horrible. It's even the good quality synthetic fibers frizz at the ends, especially when they're longer and especially when you have to detangle them more and especially when they're rubbing against your clothing more. So it happens and there's honestly not a lot you can do to avoid it because it will eventually happen. You can do things to prolong it and you can do things to repair it, but it's still going to happen. Now, saying all of this, saying that they tangle and they frizz, it happens to both fibers, but usually it happens a little bit more quickly to heat-friendly fibers. Heat-friendly fibers are just generally known to get frizzier and tanglier a little bit faster than your synthetics. It happens to both of them, but a little bit more quickly with your heat friendly. And because of this, your heat friendly fibers will require a little bit more maintenance than your synthetics. And when I say maintenance, I mean using heat because at the end of the day, heat is the only way you'll be able to get rid of the frizziness. A lot of people think that, you know, adding product, you know, conditioning in it, conditioning it, adding, you know, a silicone spray, um, that that's going to get rid of the frizziness, but no, that's not going to get rid of the frizziness. That's going to make it softer. It's going to be softer frizzies and it's going to maybe help with the tangles, but it's not going to get rid of the frizz. The only way to get rid of that frizz is by using heat on it. So if you are okay with maintaining your fibers, um, on a regular basis, I'd say every couple wears because it does happen fast, remember, then heat friendly fibers are going to be okay for you. And now again, remember that the longer it is, the more likely that's going to happen. If you have a wig that's heat friendly, that's, you know, this length and above, the maintenance that is going to be required of that is going to be way less than a longer one that's heat friendly. Also keep in mind that when you add heat to your heat friendly wig, it removes the style. So if you have a curly piece like this and it's super frizzy, um, adding heat to it's going to get rid of this original curl pattern it came in. So typically you'd wanna to stick towards the ends of your fiber to help maintain the original curl and just deal with the frizzies on the end. However, that being said, you could also completely straighten out your whole wig, make the fibers extremely soft and smooth and brand new again, and then restyle it however you please, which is kind of the beauty of heat-friendly fibers. But I know that not everyone enjoys styling and restyling and dealing with all of that. And if that's the case, you might be better off with just your typical synthetic fiber. But keep in mind that synthetic fibers also get frizzy. <laughs> And the way you would fix them is with steam. You might not have to do it as often as you would your heat friendly fibers, but once they get frizzy, I don't suggest just throwing your wig in the garbage because again, it can happen faster than you might think. I would really try to take out the steam and help refresh those fibers with it. Okay, now when we talk about the texture of these fibers, I typically find that synthetic fibers, your plain synthetic fibers, are gonna be a little bit lighter and fluffier um, and sort of stay that way. Whereas your heat friendly fibers, they might come to you really smooth and nice and soft, but over time, you're gonna find the texture of them starts to change. And what's gonna happen is they start to get a little bit gummy and almost tacky feeling. And what also happens to your fibers is they start to clump up a bit. So again, that then requires maintenance. It requires you to take your heat and straighten it out, um, take your heat and just refresh the fiber. And that typically helps with the tackiness and the gumminess. And also washing it does help with it as well. But your fibers are gonna feel just a little bit, not sticky. I don't know how else to describe it than clumpy and tacky. <laughs> and over time, they just won't want to move as freely as they did when they first came to you right out of the box. Whereas synthetic fibers do a little bit of a better job of keeping that flowy feel and not getting tacky or clumpy. I hope I'm making sense. I don't know. I always have these ideas in my brain that I want to come out and then I say them and I'm like, do you even know what I am talking about? <laughs> it's hard to explain it without having you actually feel it and see it. 
Okay, I'm gonna move on to something else that's gonna be a little bit of a difference between these two fibers. Your plain synthetic wigs, your plain synthetic toppers, your plain synthetic fibers, they usually are going to be a little bit more shiny than your heat-friendly fibers. Heat-friendly fibers are a great fiber if you wanna stay away from that typical sheen that you envision in your brain of, of a wig. You know when you think about wigs initially, like a Halloween costume wig, and you're like, oh, my Lanta, that is a shiny piece. <laughs> Those costume wigs are not what your good quality synthetics are, but your heat friendly synthetics are going to be far from that. They are more of a matte finish and they resemble human hair a little bit better than your normal synthetics. And like I said, your normal synthetics are going to be a bit shiny. Now, of course, it does differ from brand to brand and wig to wig sometimes and color to color. A way that you can reduce the shine is by using some dry shampoo, just normal dry shampoo you would use on your regular human hair um, from the drugstore. You can get that to spray all over your synthetic wigs and that's gonna help dull the shine a little bit. Also, over time, over wear, over washing it several times, the shine will dull down a bit. You have to know that when you first get a synthetic wig out of the box, it's gonna have this beautiful silicone coating on it usually and that's gonna give you the softness and the shininess. Um, but then over time, once you wash it, that's gonna wear off a bit. It will still be a bit shiny, but it will wear down a little bit. A way that you can avoid some of that extra shine would be to get more of a dimensional color. So when I say dimensional, I mean one that has more than just one color in it, maybe something with highlights, um, even something with rooting. Having more colors in it sort of helps distribute the light a little bit more sporadically as opposed to having one solid color where the light can just <laughs> reflect off of it and just look extra shiny. And another way you can avoid the extra shininess is getting a, a piece that has texture to it. So layers, curls, waves, that kind of a thing, as opposed to a sheer, uh, sleek, one length um, cut. Okay, I think I've said most of what I wanna say. I think the biggest takeaways would be the fact that synthetic fibers don't act like human hair if that's what you think they're gonna do. Synthetic fibers, especially your heat friendly fibers, do require maintenance if you want them to stay looking smooth and soft. And I think also knowing that as soon as your fibers do start to get frizzy and frazzly, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad quality wig and it doesn't necessarily mean it's time to throw it in the garbage. What it means is that you need to now do some maintenance and upkeep on your wig. But like I said, I'm gonna link some of those videos below that can help you with that. You know, using a steamer on your synthetics, using heat on your heat-friendly synthetics, and how you can use that to refurbish and restyle your wigs. Now for me, I always get asked which fiber I prefer. I usually tend to go towards the heat-friendly synthetics because I have a little bit of a shine problem. I can't seem to get out of my head the shininess of some synthetics. Again, that being said, not all of them are as shiny as others. You're gonna find some synthetics that are so beautifully done that don't go with the rule that I'm telling you right now. But overall, heat-friendly fibers just look a little bit more realistic in terms of the shine. Um, I also am someone who really enjoys um, maintaining my wigs and changing them and straightening them and curling them and doing all sorts of things to them. So I can do that with my heat friendly fibers. I can't do that with my synthetics as easily. And also when it does come to maintaining your fibers, like I mentioned, they both get frizzy and you do have to maintain both of them eventually. I personally find that it's easier to maintain my heat friendly fibers because all I do is I keep my wig on at the end of my day. If I find it's frizzy, I'll get my hair straightener, I'll get my blow dryer brush, I will go through the ends really quickly, and then I can put it on my wig stand, wig stand and store it away until I wear it next. However, when I find frizziness on my synthetics, that requires me to get into a different frame of mind. I need to go get my block canvas head, put it on that, go get my steamer and start steaming. And steamers are just a little bit harder to work with, I find. I would love to know though, what is your favorite fiber? 
favorite fiber, favorite fiber. Are you more of a plain synthetic gal or are you a heat friendly gal? There's no right or wrong answer. We all just have to do what's best for us and what works best for us and what we feel the most comfortable in. But if you do have some other thoughts about this topic, please share them below. I would love to hear them. And so would all these other ladies reading all of the comments here. I'm going to head out now though. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope this was helpful for you and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.